Today on an all new Dr. Phil. She thinks her husband had a one night stand. We had a one time relationship. With this woman. We knew it was wrong, but we didn't stop. But is there more to the story? Deep down, she knows that it happened more than once. Is she lying? Yes. What reason would I continue to lie? I don't, I don't know what to say. What are you doing sleeping with her husband? Caught between his wife and the other woman. You are at least entitled to the truth. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Some say it's a hard life, but it's hard for us all. on your spouse is on the rise. A new study shows that in America, over one in five men are having affairs, and now everybody's talking with great surprise that women are being unfaithful too. Well, who'd you think they were having affairs with? <laughs> it's at an all-time high of 15%, and many think that is underreported. So what happens if the affair is with your ex? And Because here's the problem, if you have children, you do have to main, maintain some kind of relationship with them for the sake of the child you share, right? You've got to see them. These kinds of love triangles are very complicated, and so we're going to talk to all sides in hopes of sorting everything out and maybe keeping you or your grown children from making the wrong kind of decisions. Now, this is Jessica. She's been married to Ryan for two and a half years, and they have two children. Now, Ryan was previously married to April and they now have shared custody of their son. So they have to continue to see one another. Now, it was last year that Jessica suspected something, broke into her husband's email, and found a racy message from his ex-wife. My husband was late coming home from picking up his son. I just had a really bad gut feeling and I checked his email account. Um, one of the messages said, thank you for my early birthday present. The shower afterwards was nice. I was in shock when I found these messages. I was in hysterics. I actually called my husband. He was at work. And I asked him if there was anything he needed to tell me. And I guess it was the tone of my voice, but he automatically knew. He just said, yeah, it happened. I said, well, what happened? He admitted to it. He said, yes, he slept with his ex-wife. Okay, this is not the plan, right? This is not what you're looking for when you get married and, and, and have that dream come true. So Ryan admits to having a one-time only affair. Here's what he has to say as to why he cheated on his wife. We had gotten to the point where I felt very alone in our relationship and I jumped to the nearest person, which happened to be my ex-wife. My ex-wife was willing to listen to what I had to say, whereas my wife, she just wanted to tell me what she wanted done. At the time, I felt that I was more in love with my ex-wife than my wife. It was a very confusing situation. Okay, now we're going to uh, meet April now. Uh, this is Ryan's ex-wife. She told us that she actually feels like a victim in all this. Take a look. At the time, I thought that he loved me, but now I just think it was because they had a bad sex life. He said at the time that he felt trapped by her. He's not his own person anymore. It's more that he's her husband. It was two years ago. If you can't get over it and move past it, then why are you still married? Okay, so I seem to have all the players here. So what's your position in all of this? I constantly feel like um, she's trying to get in and get closer to my husband periodically. Um, definitely feel like she's trying to control him. She definitely has a power over him. Then there's my stepson who have been in his life since he was seven months old. And um, here of late, he's been told some pretty nasty things about me. And it's hard to maintain um, 
a calm home. He lives with us half the time. So it's... You two were friends. Friendly? Yes. What are you doing sleeping with her husband? We started a relationship a week after we got divorced when we were supposed to be getting our taxes done. And it, it continued on. And I got deeper and deeper into thinking that he was coming back to me, which obviously was not the case. Okay, so what do you say about you? So you had a one-time affair with her? Yes, while I was married. Um, but she is right. A week after we, our divorce was finalized, we began a um, physical relationship as just, as just that, a physical relationship when afterwards, but before I met my wife. As you just heard, it, Ryan, uh, Ryan admitted that he had sex one time with his ex uh, since being married to Jessica. April says, deep down, he knows better. I, I don't know what that means. I'd think you'd kind of have that on the tip of your tongue. That we, you'd know what you had done. But let's take a look at this and see what's been said. A week after our divorce was final, we started a sexual relationship again. His wife thinks it only happened one time, but her husband and I were sleeping together for the entire first year of their marriage. The sex was on and off for a couple years. We knew it was wrong, but we didn't stop. Okay, I mean, you're here. Do you want to fix half of the problem? Do you want to deal with part of this? What's the truth? I mean, if you're going to be, if you're going to be here, I mean, let's at least put it all on the table and tell the truth. We had a sexual relation before me and Jessica got together. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, we stopped, but we still spoke on a regular basis. We were, uh, we were friends, and we were friendly. At first, it wasn't, re I mean, it wasn't a real good because we argued a lot concerning Jessica and her coming into the dynamic. When did y'all get married? We got married March 6, 2006. March 6, 2006. Yes. Okay, and you had sex for, with him for almost a year after that, right? Yes, until January of 2007. Is she lying? Yes. My feeling is, what, what reason would I continue to lie? I don't, I don't know what to say. If you want to come here and fix your marriage, don't you think that she deserves to know the truth? Because I think deep down she knows that it happened more than once, and I'm sorry if that makes you angry. We had a one-time relationship. And I, I mean, I, I don't know, I can't defend it. I can't say that it didn't happen, but I can say that I love my wife and that I want to work it out. And I really believe after that happened and after she found out could be the best thing that ever happened in our relationship for the fact that it made me realize how much I loved my wife and how much I wanted to fix things. Yeah, well, I'm real big on being clear. Let me be clear on this. It wasn't the best thing that happened to your relationship. Uh, don't no, even, I mean, I mean don't sorry. even try to justify this. I mean, what do you believe? I don't know. Um, her story has changed a lot, so um, I'm not sure what to believe on her end. He's always said it was the one-time thing. He did admit to sleeping with her before he met me. Um, that's... That's all I know for sure. Hmm. Well, when we come back, you're going to hear how Ryan claims that Jessica's rules led to a fight that got way out of control. We'll be right back. She took my cell phone out of my hand and struck me across the face with it, and then tried to strike me again backhanded, and I actually bit her finger, which is something I'm not very proud of. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. <laughs> Children who won't stop eating. She's never satisfied. You have actually padlocked the cupboard. Yes. So she can't get to the food. And <laughs> addicted to a diet of sausage and grits. <laughs> How to control your child's weight. You said you don't even remember buying baby food. So what were you feeding her? You are her role model. Then, on Wednesday, parents doubling as professional thieves. The most successful shoplifters on the West Coast. We've stolen almost a million dollars. Now, do you ever get scared? They're exposing their identity. That's a camera, that's a camera, that's a camera. You ought to be scared now. And revealing how they did it. That's Wednesday. My husband says he only cheated on me once with his ex-wife while we were together. His ex-wife said it went on for months. 
Right now, I don't think he's cheating, but I do think that she has a power over him, and I'm afraid she's going to weasel back in. I don't trust them together at all. Well, Jessica and Ryan are married, uh, but she may now want a divorce after finding out that her husband has cheated with his ex-wife, April, maybe more than once. Now, since Ryan and April share custody of a son, uh, they feel like they just can't end all contact, which is what Jessica would want. However, she laid down some very specific rules for when Ryan has to pick up his son and communicate with his ex-wife. Now, you're trying to build a fence around him, right? I am trying to build a fence around our family. Well, you're trying to build a fence around your husband and your family. I, my, I get that point. But you're trying whole. to protect him. I mean, Jessica's rules are she doesn't allow Ryan to pick up or drop off son by himself. When April drops off her son, she has to honk the horn before getting out of the car, stand by the car, and then bring son to the porch. She's not allowed past the porch, never can go inside. Ryan is not allowed to be alone with April or go into her house. He can only talk with April via text. If they're talking, then he's to call Jessica immediately and report what was discussed. Uh, she checks the phone records to confirm this pattern. True? No. That's not true? Um, some of it, yes. But y'all have agreed to this. Uh -huh. We didn't uh -huh. agree to a beeping over the horn or anything like that. That was... Uh -huh. But Where's no, I don't from? think he should be in her home. I want to find out wh what we're dealing with here. Are you still saying that, y y look, that you just had the sexual contact one time? Yes. So... What are the details about? What are the specifics? When was it? Where was it? How did you meet? How did you set it up? Well, usually, if it happened, tell me how it happened. Usually, he would bring my son to my house to drop him off, right. or I would take him to his house to drop him off or pick him up. And at the time, Jessica was working, and we would just have a quick innuendo Encounter. and then be done with it. Okay, and, so that would be at your house or at their house? Right. Okay, so how many times did this take place? I don't even know how many times it took place, but I know it took place... Well, let's guess. <laughs> Are we talking six or 60? More like 60. Definitely more than six. Okay. What's the truth? The truth is we only had the one time. I... And, and when Jessica found out, I immediately told her what happened, gave, told her everything. Let her, she had access to all my emails, all my records, everything. I to so that she could see. Okay, well, let me let me interrupt you because I'm trying to move us along here. I'm not talking about emails here. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about did you or did you not have repeated sexual interactions with this woman at her house or yours during this year? It, it's going to come out. This isn't really an essay question. You you, <laughs> you you either had sex with this woman repeatedly during that year or you didn't. Why would I agree to come on here if it was just one time? Do you think I want to make myself look bad in front of all these people? If you want to fix your marriage, which I know that both of you think that that's totally not my plan, if you want to fix your marriage, you can't lie about it because when she goes home, she has friends with a woman who used to be my best friend. Do you think she doesn't know? She was our next door neighbor. She knows. What do you think about all this? I don't know what to think. I, I want to believe my husband. I, not that one time or 50 times makes a difference to me. I mean, either way, I feel like he cheated on me. He um, completely undermined the vows that we took before God, which to me means a lot. Um, but I do wonder. When you found out, that's the last time it ever happened. And that will be the last time it ever happened. Trust me. So he is telling the truth then. January was the very last time. When you found out, that was it. I just don't understand that if you guys want to fix your marriage, if you're not going to tell the truth, then why did you come to the show? I came to the show to try to fix my marriage, to show my wife that I was willing to do whatever it took to make her feel better and to get things resolved. I, I don't you know understand. what else. You understand, you've got to tell the truth to do that. Because yes. if you come here and, and you go through all of this, and then you get home and the truth comes out and it's different than this, then, I mean, you're, you're burning all your bridges. I, I'm, I'm telling the truth. Uh, who's telling the truth? Uh, should they even stay together? Um, I'm going to tell them what I think and what has to happen when we come back.
All right, we're, we're talking about, for lack of a better words, I, I guess, a love triangle. I don't, I don't mean to sensationalize it. Uh, it's between Ryan, his wife Jessica, and his ex-wife April. Everybody agrees that they've had sex at least once uh, between the ex-wife April and, and Ryan. So what's the future for this couple? Uh, I'm real uncomfortable with the fact that we can't agree on what's happened. And let me tell you why I'm saying this, because I really want to help you. I want to help you make an informed decision that's in the best interest of everybody involved, including you. And to make that decision, you are at least entitled to the truth. You're at least entitled to know what it is you're dealing with. And I was going to spend some more time talking to you guys right now, but um, I'm not going to do that because uh, we're not getting anywhere here. I'm just going to ask you guys to go backstage and spend some time alone and think about this whole situation, and then I'm going to bring you back out here later in the show. Sorry to throw a wrench in everything, but it's not about television. It's about figuring something out that's based on fact. And I, I want everybody to just step back and think about this. You're all going to be separate. If you all just exit right down here, it's going to give you some time to spend with yourself to think about what's going on. Well, okay, we're just going to move on uh, because we, we have another situation in today's show that I want to talk about. Daniel wrote to me about the guilt he felt after cheating emotionally on his wife, uh, who he's been with for seven years. The other woman in this situation is Kayla. Now, Daniel and Kayla met on a chat line. There was a feeling of inadequacy in me where I felt I was no longer attractive to anyone. The chat lines gave me reassurance that I was able to find someone who would appreciate me. When I first started speaking to Kayla, it was just a normal, friendly conversation. But as it went on, Kayla made me feel special. It fed my ego. I noticed that Daniel would be on his cell phone a lot, and I would say to Daniel, you know, who are you constantly on the phone with? I enjoyed talking to Kayla because she would listen. She wasn't pushy. There was no yelling and screaming. I, w I didn't have to be Daniel the father or Daniel the husband. Daniel would say, I'll go do the laundry. I'll go take the kids to the park. Anything that meant for him to be out of the house, anywhere, I guess, he can be on his telephone. The more we talked, the more that we bonded. At a point, it did turn emotional. She told me she cared for me, and I told her I cared for her, too. I just feel devastated. I'm just so hurt. I just feel like I can't move on with my life. Well, since being booked on the show for an emotional affair, which you just heard, Daniel actually just revealed to his wife that, well, it was actually a sexual affair. In the past couple of days, I found out that Daniel and Kayla have had a sexual relationship. He did admit to me that he met her in person and they did have sex. I decided to tell Kayla that I wanted to meet her. We went to the hotel, we had sex. They didn't go out to eat. They just went to a hotel room, had sex, and that was it. It's still disgusting to me, though. The moment that we did have intercourse, I regretted it. I just feel like he's a dirty person. Daniel was a married man with three children. Kayla knew the situation. If I ever run into her or see her, may God be with her, honestly. And I want her to forgive me, and I hope that we can move forward with our marriage and rebuild it. The state of my marriage, it's beyond repair at this point. I really don't want anything to do with him anymore. Saving this marriage means the world to me. I do not want to lose my wife. She's my life. Well, we'll talk to Karen and Daniel when we come back. Coming this November on Dr. Phil, is this husband leading a double life? This is the time. What is the secret that we're talking about? What is it that she doesn't know? Now he faces the lie detector. I'm trying to help you here, man. Before we get these results, I would like to give him one last chance. His secret will shock you. Do you really mean that? Plus. Every day I wish I was dead. They survived their father's family sex cult. What happened in the back room? I was like, now. I'm oh, sorry, but I didn't want to do it. Can they forgive the sister who abused them? I wanted to deck her and I couldn't. I wanted 
want to be with you so bad. Forgiveness <laughs> is a choice. I want to forgive Dr. Phil, but it's killing me inside. This November, only on Dr. Phil. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity and you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. Karen and Daniel are here to talk about infidelity that has uh, impacted this relationship. At first, what he said was, well, it was an emotional affair, and that's all there was to it. Uh, and that was not okay with Karen at all. But now he admits that it, in fact, was a physical affair. Um, how do you feel about this? Devastated. You said this deal's over. Pretty much because I believe that Daniel can't change. So you got on this chat room, right? Yes, sir. What did you, you post up there? Uh, it was just normal chat room stuff, you know, just go on there and say your, name, your age, where you're from, and just start up a conversation. Didn't you say, quote, married, comma, looking for discreet sex? Yes, sir. That doesn't sound to me like normal chat room chatter, and I'm not a chat room junkie. I, <laughs> I, I don't get in these things very often, but I don't believe I've ever seen anybody say married, looking for discreet sex. Are, are, you, are you not being forthcoming when you say, I just in, just normal stuff in chat room, just bumped into somebody? No, sir. That uh, sounds to me like a pretty provocative posting. Well, the, the website was an adult website orientated towards that genre. Okay, so furthermore, it wasn't just a chat room. It was a sexual oriented chat room. Yes, sir. And you posted married looking for discreet sex. Um, why did you do that? I was looking for a way to feel like I was attractive, feel like someone would look at me and say, well, that's an attractive man. You said you wanted to prove that you still had, quote, game yes, and sir. could get girls. Yes, sir. Because you didn't feel attractive. Yes, sir. And, and you got one. Biggest mistake of my life. I assume you took all the precautions when you had sex? No, sir. You had unprotected sex? Yes, sir. Did you, do you know that? Yes. Have you been tested? Mm, not yet. Are you concerned? Have you been tested? No, sir, I'm very concerned. This is the biggest mistake of my life. Have you had sex with your wife since you had sex, with, unprotected sex with this woman? Yes. Were you concerned that you might be infecting her? Yes. With some STD, some, some serious life-threatening disease? I am. What are you not telling us? I've come clean with everything. I'm not hiding anything anymore. I want to repair my marriage. I want to move forward with our lives. And I want to rebuild the trust that we lost for each other. So why are you so in love now when you were out looking for some chick on a chat room? <laughs> I just wanted to feel like somebody would be there for me if she wouldn't. But I realized this moment that it happened, I was making a mistake. Nobody's going to love me like you are. Nobody's going to be there for me. Nobody. The things that we've been through, nobody will understand. I love you. I know what I've done is the worst thing possible. This has been going on, though, for years. This isn't just, like, you know, a couple of months. I mean, you know, I've caught him doing this for years. This is the only f time I, you know, caught him 
being with someone physically, but you know the chats and and the and the internet and things like that have well, been going on for that's many years. Is it really believable that the one time she caught you is the only time you did it? It's not believable, but it's the truth. Okay. Well, when we come back, we spoke to the other woman, this chat room chick. Uh, we're going to find out why she says she fed Daniel what his wife couldn't. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. <laughs> Children who won't stop eating. She's never satisfied. You have actually padlocked the cupboard. Yes. How to control your child's weight. That's tomorrow. Closed captioning provided by... What I was getting from Kayla was attention, uh, affection, encouragement. What I was getting from my wife was nothing but arguments and fights and just horrible expressions of emotions. I don't know what to do at this point. He just made me feel like I can never be with him again. Well, we're talking with uh, Karen and Daniel about his infidelity. At first, he called it an emotional affair. Uh, but now he admits that it was physical. And we spoke to the other woman, and I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I had problems with her being part of this, uh, just out of respect for you. I, I, I just, I, I didn't really think she should be part of this. We thought about talking to her on the phone, I, I, and that's not going to happen either. Um, uh, but the producers did talk to us, and what she said was that she fed him what his wife couldn't, uh, and that she isn't a home wrecker. What was it she fed you? She was able to listen to me and not yell at me or judge me. We were able to dialogue and talk about the problems me and my wife were having. She didn't judge you? No, sir. You weren't cheating on her. <laughs> you were cheating on her. Right. I mean, come on, how old are you? 26 years old, sir. 26 years old. Y you know, right, that it's easy to be wonderful for an hour a week. You don't have to share expenses, you don't have to clean house, you don't have to deal with bills and in-laws and realities. You just go off and play house with somebody that's real. What do you think she would be like, you got her home, got her unwrapped, and lived with her 24-7? Nowhere near what my wife is. But you confided to her about your wife. Yes, sir. Does that just piss you off? Absolutely. That he's over talking with this woman ab about you? Yes. So what do you want to do here? I don't know what there is to do here. I just don't really believe anything he tells me anymore. So you think he's lying? He's still omitting. Is that true? No, sir, that's not true. So this is it. If you're going to clean this up, you need to clean it all up now. Yes, sir. Because if it's just, gee, how lucky you are that you found the only time. It's not credible. You, you realize it's not credible? I understand that, but that is the truth. Or are you mincing words and playing semantics? Is it that you've had other real world connections, but it didn't go as far as this one? But no, I've, I've never met anyone off the internet. I've never met anyone else than Kayla. Uh -huh. That is the God's honest truth. I'm here today to tell my wife that I'm sorry and I will do anything it takes to save our marriage. I know how you feel. I'm you don't sorry. know how I feel. I didn't do it to you. You put it in my mind that you did, though. Do you understand what that phone call did to me? Another man telling me that he's gonna have sex with you and you don't get home till eight in the morning? The day before, what he's talking about, I caught him on a chat line. So I did go out and um, I had another man make him jealous, but it's just tit for tat. That's, that's really what my part in this was. Yeah, you know, I wrote a special section of a book called Relationship Rescue that talks about the dangers of tit for tat, uh, good or bad, mm -hmm. you know, keeping score in any way. We're not in high school anymore, okay? This isn't, you know, sit by me in the lunchroom so I can make my boyfriend jealous. We're talking about a marriage here. Did y'all not take this serious at all? When you got married? This was the best thing I ever did was marry my wife. 
Well, it's easy to say when you're caught. No, seriously, you're, you're feeling remorse right now, but do, do, do you think you've maybe not taken this seriously enough? Well, it is true. It is true, or you, or you would have not turned away from your wife to fix problems. If there were problems in the marriage, and listen, I'm not saying that there weren't legitimate problems in the marriage. I'll bet you if we make a list, you probably have legitimate complaints about her. Your mistake is you made an illegitimate reaction to the legitimate problems. And, and that means now that overshadows everything. She gets a free pass. Right. She gets a free pass because what you did is so outrageous that she could have been cold, critical, withholding of affection, attention, cr you know, judging you, dogging on you, never being good. At, all of those things, they just get raked off the table because of what you did. You gave her a free pass. So that means it's hard to fix those things now because, you know, this may be a life sentence. Well, let me tell you what I think. You wonder what I think? I think you got a real problem here. And, and I think there's one thing that has to happen before you can move to the next level and make a, a, a mature decision. If you, you may just say, oh, I, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I, I'm done. I'm, I'm young. I got my whole life ahead of me. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life worrying what he's doing. Mm -hmm. That may be where you are. And if it is, it is. But there's one thing that I would like to see happen before you make that decision. He doesn't get it yet, does he? I don't he doesn't so. get what he did. Yes, I don't. No, no, you don't. You think you do. Trust me, you don't. I, I know because of the things you're saying. And you probably don't because she hasn't really allowed you to really know what this did to her inside. She doesn't want to do that with you. And she will never, ever get over this unless and until she knows you get it. Because she'll never trust you again unless she knows that if you do this again, you will do it with a full awareness of what you're doing to her when you do it. And unless she knows that you get that, I mean to the core of your soul, she'll never trust you again. And then if you ever do it again, she can say, okay, he knew what this would do to me, and he did it anyway. I can walk away without any regrets whatsoever. And you don't know that yet. You think you do. The very fact that you say, yes, I do know, tells me you don't know. Because she hasn't told you yet. And, that, and I'm going to ask you, I want you two to sit down. You're going to have to give it a voice. You're going to have to get it out. You're going to have to tell him, let me tell you what this did to me when I, find, when I found out that you went and had unprotected sex with some woman to dishonor me, to dishonor our marriage, and to put both of us in harm's way. Let me tell you what that did to me inside. I think you need to do that, and you need to hear that. And when she does it, you need to listen. You don't need to talk. You don't need to explain. You don't need to justify. You don't need to interrupt. You need to listen with your head and your heart. And that will be the first moment since this happened that you'll have a chance to put this back together. Are you willing to do that? Yes, sir. Are you willing to do that? Yes. When we come back, uh, I'm going to talk with Jessica, Ryan, and April. Um, see if anything's led to the truth. We'll be right back. If it comes out that that happened in my house, I don't know that I can forgive that. I'm telling you the truth. I can't give you proof. I don't have anything to give you. Just my word. And I know nobody in the audience believes me. I apparently must seem like a liar. DrPhil.com, brought to you in part by... Help protect your home with CSL Creosote Sweeping Log. It cleans your chimney while it burns. Burn just once every 60 fires. CSL. Travel consideration provided by... You've probably been meaning to clean your chimney. With CSL, it's so easy. Burn just once every 60 fires. CSL, the log with the chimney sweep on the box. Available at Walmart and True Value. If you would like to purchase a tape or transcripts of your favorite Dr. Phil show, please log on to drphil.com or call 866-4-DR-PHIL. That's 866-437-7445. 866-437-7445.
Okay, earlier in the show, I, I sent Jessica, Ryan, and Ryan's ex-wife all backstage. I asked them to spend some time with themselves to think about this. Um, I, I, I have the complete feeling that I'm not getting, there's no way I can get to the truth because I have two totally conflicting stories here about the extent of the infidelity in this relationship. Now, I, I've asked April to stay out for a, a minute or maybe the whole time, I don't know. Because this is about you two. But this isn't about her, this is about you two. Uh, if he hadn't done it with her, he'd done it with somebody else. You know, it's just, you have to own this, right? Yes. I, I... Now, Ryan, what, what do you have to say about this? I, I, don't, I don't honestly know what to say. I, I've told my wife everything. She knows everything that's going on. I've explained it the same. I, I've never wavered in what I've said, not once. I don't. Okay, well, your ex-wife says, I said, did you have sex more than once during the time of their marriage? She said, yes. I said, how many times? She said, I, don't know. I said, was it six or 60? She said it was closer to 60. Uh, that on these visitations, now, she's either just completely fabricating this for some reason, or you're not being forthcoming. Uh, and, I am, and listen, I, oh, I don't sorry. think it really matters <laughs> to your, uh, I think in for a penny, in for a pound. I think she just wants to know where the bottom is. I think she wants to know that we, whatever we're going to do, whatever we're going to deal with, it's all on the table. It is all on the table. I have told her absolutely everything. I've given her every detail, every, I mean, literally down to details she didn't want of the relationship. So you're telling me this happened one time or more than one time? One time. Just one time, that's Just it. one time. It was, that was the one, that was my indiscretion. That was what I did that, ru that okay. collapsed our, our relationship. Do you believe that? So I don't know what to believe. I honestly, I would say I, I would want to believe my husband, but... All right, let's assume, for argument's sake, that it was one time. Where are you now? Right now, we have children in the middle. We have um, him getting defensive when I question where he's been or why he's late or text messages. Do you want to end this or do you want to try to repair this? I want to try to repair this. And how about you? I desperately want to, to repair this. Okay, well, here's the deal. Uh, I just explained to another couple in a similar situation, uh, one of the things I want to tell you now. She will never start to rebuild and forgive until she knows that you get what this did to her. And you have responsibility in that. You have to make eye contact with him and you have to let him know. It may take a day, an hour, a week, I don't know. But you gotta make sure that he knows what this did to you. What it did to your trust, what it did to your self-esteem, what it did to the honor of your marriage and your family, how much it hurt you, how much it made you mad at yourself as well as him. You, you, you have to give a voice to all of those things so he understands what he did to you. And so you, you have to make sure that he understands that. And your job? Your job is to plug in and listen. Your job is to recognize you ran this off in the ditch. You had no responsibility for this whatsoever. So you need to understand, and you need to understand, you own this, your choice, you made it. You ran this off in the ditch, it's your job to get it back up on the road, and it doesn't, it's not that you do that for a week or a month, you do it until. You do it until you have recreated the, the, the ability to be trusted. And believe me, I, I'm, I'm real troubled by you trying to build this fence. You can't watch him enough. I, I guarantee you, if he wants to do it again, he can go do it. You can't build a big enough fence around him. You can't check enough text messages. You can't check enough cell phones. You can't follow him enough times. You, you, I mean, I, I'll promise you, if he wants to do it, he'll do it. And so there's no sense wearing yourself out chasing them. And for your part, you just have to decide people who have nothing to hide, hide nothing. You gotta live your life in a picture window with bright lights on. And if she wants to come see if you're over playing softball, you better be there with a the bat in your hand. <laughs> Until, and, you, and you should check when you feel the need to, but don't chase them. 
if you got to watch him to keep him honest, let him go. I mean, he, honest to God, if, if you got to keep him on a short leash and go around, hell, let him go. You know. He, he ought to be transparent to you in every possible way. Does that make sense? It does. That's, I've tried for that. I, he's still defensive when I ask about let, something. Let me tell you, if he gets defensive, kick his ass to the curb. You can't, that's your, listen, you get what I'm saying. I, I understand. You have foreclosed your right to be defensive mm -hmm. because you have claimed your right to be guilty. Mm -hmm. So you can't be guilty and defensive at the same time. You do this when? Until. until. You don't do it for a week or a month or until you think any rational human being ought to get it. You do it until. If I make some resources available to you as a couple to continue, Continue to unravel and work through this. Will, will you do that? Yes. Will you avail yourself of it? You owe that to your kids. Yes. And I will make those reasons. Okay. Uh, next, our viewers reveal in a confidential poll whether or not they've cheated and what they consider cheating. Find out those surprising results when we come back. Season 7, get on drphil.com, click on Be in the Audience or call 323-461-PHIL, 323-461-7445. We've been talking about infidelity, and Jessica, you guys, I've said I'm going to make some resources available to you, right? Because at some point, you either have to forgive or unplug. And, and when you forgive somebody, it doesn't mean that what they did was okay. But at some point, you have to do that for you and for him. And if you can't do that or you choose not to do that, then you need to unplug. I'm just curious. I'll take a poll right here. If you think Ryan is telling the truth, if you think this is a one-time thing, stand up. Okay. I, I, I want you to have it feedback. Ryan, that's the hill you've got to climb, right? Yep. That's, that's the hill you've got. That's why I say you do this until. Emotional affairs often lead to physical affairs. It's a dangerous path to start down. We did a poll on our website at drphil.com, and here are the results. Almost 40% of you say you've had emotional affairs, and yet 90% consider that cheating on your spouse. You recognize that it went too far. That's interesting, but yet you still do it, so think about that. Okay, uh, I really appreciate you all being here. For more on this and how to resolve these issues if they're part of your relationship, go to drphil.com. I'll have the steps. I ain't saying they're easy, but I'll have them. Thanks. don't have to like each other, but we do have to get along. And I think that we should be able to go to parent counseling because obviously we all individually have issues with everybody else. I think that would probably be best. I think. Group counseling. Group counseling um, for parenting. Okay. I agree as well. I think that would be a great benefit to us. To everybody. Do you have one? I did. Just curious, I'll take a poll right here. If you think Ryan is telling the truth, if you think this is a one-time thing, stand up. Okay. I, I, I want you to have it feedback. Ryan, that's the hill you've got to climb, right? Yep. That's, that's the hill you've got. That's why I say you do this until. Emotional affairs often lead to physical affairs. It's a dangerous path to start down. We did a poll on our website at drphil.com, and here are the results. Almost 40% of you say you've had emotional affairs, and yet 90% consider that cheating on your spouse. You recognize that it went too far. That's interesting, but yet you still do it, so think about that. Okay, uh, I really appreciate you all being here. For more 
on this and how to resolve these issues if they're part of your relationship, go to drphil.com. I'll have the steps. I ain't saying they're easy, but I'll have them. Thanks. have to like each other but we do have to get along and I think that we should be able to go to parent counseling because obviously we all individually have issues with everybody else I think that would probably be best I think group counseling group counseling um, for parenting okay. I agree as well I think that would be a great benefit to us to everybody mm -hmm. do you have I did